So I got a few correct guesses, but boy, this spar tape. This threw a lot of people off the track. And uh, I will admit, I didn't even think about it when I put this in that video. Uh, and I'm definitely not a Pinarello person, but this most bar tape, mwah, like three millimeters, super light. Yeah, just love this tape, but yeah, en enough of that tape. The new frame, as you can see, is the Allied Echo. And when this was released earlier this summer, it immediately caught my eye. I just really fell for the look of it. Like fully integrated cables, still kind of uh, off-road looking without looking like a like drop bar mountain bike. No aero shenanigans or no drop seat stays. Yeah, basically just really love the look of it. And when I took a closer look at the geometry chart, I realized an M-sized Echo was really close to my open up with the option to tighten everything up with that adjustable flip chip system. And it was enough for me to convince myself that this would be my new gravel slash adventure slash bikepacking rig. And the fully integrated cables is definitely a big part of that. I know it's very popular right now to hate on all these new proprietary integrated parts. But I love tinkering with my bikes and I'm pretty confident I will be able to sort this bike out as well. Of course, if I worked in a bike shop and had to route integrated cockpits all day long, I would also complain. But on my own bikes, when it can look this clean, it's definitely worth every piece of extra sweat in my book. Especially if you run handlebars. Especially if you run handlebar bags, whether it's just for small ones or big ones for bikepacking, having those cable tucked away, it's bliss. Absolute bliss. Which is a good thing. Like I said, this will be my adventure rig and there will probably one or two handlebar bags mounted on this bike from time to time. But in this video, I thought I would share the plan for this build. I have pretty much every single part on hand right now, so I thought it would be pretty interesting to see or guesstimate where this build would end up in terms of weight. Then I can completely focus on the building part in the upcoming build video and not go over every single part again. I will warn you though, uh, while I'm focusing on weight, uh, this bike will not be a weight weenie project. Sorry to disappoint. Well, I guess anything you put a THM clavicular crank on at least will look very light. But I knew from the very start that this frame would not be the lightest frame set in the world. That flip chip system with integrated brake mounts as well, it's all metal. So there was no way this would be a super light frame set for sure. From what I see, seen, Ally doesn't specify the frame weight, which is a pretty clear giveaway that this might not be the lightest frame. I've read somewhere on some website that was quoted in like 950 grams uh, for a naked M sized frame. Add all that flip chip hardware and paint and that's definitely over a kilo for sure. And of course I didn't go for that standard lightweight matte black paint either. I went for this rather fetching maroon metallic white logos. Mwah looks delicious but the paint is probably one of the heavier options and i wouldn't be surprised if the paint alone added around 100 grams or so super happy with how it turned out can't wait to see how it looks out under the real sun as well it will be slightly painful to put protective tape on that for all the bags but i guess that can't be helped either anyway we still need to determine where this frame lands in terms of weight so my frame, no flip chip hardware in size M, tips the scale at 1,159 grams. To be totally frank, I was hoping for sub 1,100 grams, but I'm not too shocked that it's over. The hanger and flip chip hardware comes in at 52 grams, and the seat post wedge was quite an anchor at 21 grams. The uncut fork including the flip chips uh, is 446 grams. So the complete frame and fork with all the hardware ends up at 1,678 grams. One thing that was a nice surprise was the through axles that turned out to be Industry 9 with a respectable weight at 58 grams for the pair. 
The last piece is the color match stem, making that unusually slim integration possible. Definitely not the weight we need item at 197 grams. All worth it for the cost though. At least that expander and the preload adjustment thingamajing is pretty damn light at 16 grams for the set. Headset and bottom bracket are both from Chris King with the headset coming at 63 grams and the bottom bracket at 88 grams. So my order was for the frame set and the handlebar alone. The rest of the stuff will come over from the open apart from tires and stuff like that. I specifically needed a handlebar with the opening at the clamp area for that nice and neat integrated cables. I know I'm triggering some of you guys out there now. You're welcome. Initially I ordered the black ink road bar, I think it's called, because that was the lightest option going with my instinct. But then I started to think, what do I really want to do with this bike? I don't want it to be a replacement for the Emonda. So I wanted something with a bit more flair. And the other option Allied provided there was the new NVAR bars. So 40 at the hoods with a nice flare beneath the levers out to uh, 45.2 millimeters, not millimeters, centimeters. So pretty damn close to the 3T Super Gia that I liked so much in the past. Slight premium in price, unfortunately, and also about 50 grams heavier than the Black Ink bar, but I'm still happy I did that change in the end. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, the plan is pretty much to have this bike uh, set up in gravel mode all the time and the tires I'm going to ride is the Continental Terra Speed 700 by 40 millimeters. I am not really a big fan of Continental in general but I'm always up for trying something new and that really creamy mm, sidewall I think would look absolutely delicious with this maroon metallic frame. They will be mounted to my old Far Sport feather wheels. So this will actually be quite a light wheel and tire setup for gravel, in my opinion. The frame can take my 650B wheels with the Gravel King 48 millimeter tires as well. But thinking about how much road I need to cover before I get to any gravel here, I think 700 by 40 would be a nicer combination. But I haven't ridden them yet, so we'll see. Disc rotors will be my old XTR rotors. There's still some life left in them, and they are by far my favorite Shimano rotors. Dry train will consist of the XTR 11 to 40 cassette, Shimano 901 11 speed chain, and the chain ring on that THM crank is the absolute black 42 round chain ring. Shimano XTR pedals with the slipping seals and all will be my foot interface. By the way, if you have that slipping seal uh, issue, a layer of uh, electrical tape around the spindle has actually kept that seal in place for me for several months now. So yeah, simple hack to fix that. On that new MV bar, I will hang the GRX DI2 levers. Those will be connected to a rear XT DI2 derailleur as well as a Dura-Ace rear brake caliper and an Ultegra in the front. Might be a Dura-Ace in the front as well. I'll have to see about that. The handlebar will be wrapped with that most handlebar tape that threw so many people off. Good stuff. The seating situation will of course be my favorite saddle of all time, the Burke Lupina padded and that will sit on top of my old school single bolt NV seat post. That's probably the oldest bike part I own right now. The last pieces will be those Arundel bottle cages with the down tube one being that side entry version for when I ride a frame bag. I also have a third bottle cage that I can mount underneath the down tube if I need it, but the standard setup will be with two ball cages. So what else do we need to add in terms of weight? We have all the small itty bitty DI2 bits, cables and junctions, stuff like that. The brake hoses I need to cut so I don't have the exact weight, but let's estimate that to like 80 grams or something like that. So I think I can leave the total estimate at this number. There's still other stuff that need to be added. Uh, like caliper bolts that I have on order right now for the correct length. 
tire sealant, foam sleeve, random grease bits. So I'm definitely expecting to be heavier than this number, but mentally I'm prepared to see something like 7.6 kilos. If it goes under that, I will be very pleasantly surprised. So definitely not the lightest bike in the world, but remember the Emonda is my actual weight winning project and that's definitely not over. There's some really good stuff coming, I promise. I just had to throw that in there so you don't lose trust in me. Now, some people might wonder why I would replace the Open with this Echo. Realistically, the Open has more potential uh, for weight savings just because the frame set is lighter and there's probably people that would choose the Open over the Echo for that matter. But if you want my reasoning, like I said in the beginning, <laughs> but I'm just gonna be totally honest, the main reason I just wanted to build up a new gravel bike. Like I said in the past, there's no forever bike for me. Bikes get sold and bought after a couple of seasons. Things keeps turning. This is my hobby. It's not a utility kind of thing for me. I love building, I love upgrading, I love planning new bikes just about as much as I like riding them. So yeah, that's the main reason. And it doesn't mean I recommend other people would should buy the stuff I buy or saying that this bike is better than another bike or something like that. As I try to point out from time to time, I don't do bike reviews. I just do videos about my bikes and the story about those bikes evolving along the way. No sponsors, no freebies, stuff that I want myself and I'm willing to actually pay my own money for. So that's what you get. I got a lot of people uh, telling me they bought an open because of my videos and that's pretty scary to be honest. But remember, no matter what video I make, your bike is still the same it was before you saw this video. So just enjoy your bike. No reason to go out buy stuff just because idiots do. So it's time to start building this bike up. And uh, as usual, my bike build videos usually takes quite a bit of while to finish. So don't expect anything like next week. It's probably gonna be a few weeks or months or so before I gonna get that video edited and released. And there might actually be some uh, Emonda stuff in between that. Hopefully, if everything goes smoothly like I want it to go. So yeah, if you want to, I will catch you in the next one. Peace. That flip ship, that flip chip system. Damn, that's hard to say. That flip ship chip system, especially with that flip ship sips. That flip ship. That flip ship. That flip ship. That flip ship. That flip ship.